Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I'm really excited to be scrutinizing this video today. We're going back to Russia to take a look at another Jack and Jill format competition. I can't wait to tell you what I think about it. Not really sure who's in the competition, so let's get right into it. Come on. Yes. Yeah, they're having so much fun. This is great. Hey, good timing, good timing. That was a great couple. All right, what's next? I like how they waited for the band. Sometimes you get a little nervous and you just get on out there and sometimes the timing isn't right. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice break. Nice break. I like how they're trying different things together. That's great. I love when dancers add a bit more creativity in their movement. Good timing. Come on. I like how the camera is switching things up a little bit. I don't know if they did this in post-production or not, but I really like it. It's not just shot from the front. It's really good. Yeah.
So it looks like they're gonna have two rounds. Okay, this is round two. Getting a lot of support in the back. <laughs> yes. Unintentional body slams. They happen, folks. They happen. I like how they recovered, though. It's like, what are you going to do? Just make it happen, or are you just going to lay out there and cry? That's good. Yes. Sweeping away something. I'm not sure what it is. Everybody loves it. It's the, it's just an understanding that when you uh, end a competition, everybody has to line up and swing out as hard as you can for at least three or four times. I love that. Doesn't matter what country, doesn't matter what group of people, it's just there. You gotta do it. Pretty good, let's talk about it. Okay, first off, I just wanna say congratulations for everybody who put themselves in the limelight uh, to do this open competition. Generally, with an open competition, dancers don't have a tremendous amount of experience, and there's a lot of pressure that goes along with getting out there with uh, an inexperienced dance background, and I, I can understand how nervous you can be but I wanna say most of the dancers that participated in this competition didn't seem to look nervous at all. So that was really cool to see that many of them just broke through, went out there and made it happen anyway. So big shout out to you for participating. When we're talking about an open competition, I would say this is a bit different. 
than the rest of the competitions that I like to judge because there's some philosophical things that I value as a judge on the open level. The open level is really kind of like an introductory competitive level. And really, if you're going to be competing at this level, you have to be able to balance uh, and understand very clearly what you're doing. And what I say is fundamental to Lindy Hop is, is something that most people would agree with, but we don't say it the same way. I like to say that Lindy Hop is broken up into two categories. You have craftsmanship and you also have artistry. And both of those things are kind of in a tug of war and you're working together to balance those aspects of this dance. The craftsmanship part is really the movements that people have created long ago that have been preserved for us to emulate and uh, preserve for future generations. Those are those moves that have names to them. They have a little bit of history. And I feel it's incredibly important if we're gonna be respectful for an art form we didn't create to master those moves first before we just kind of do whatever we want with it. The other half of that is really to recognize that we can't just live in the past 100% because those that were in the past that came up with the original moves, that was artistry for them. And so they continue to build on top of that legacy throughout each generation. The musicians did that, the dancers did that. And so for us dancers today, there has to be a modicum of ingenuity that we put into the art form that really is a, a respectful um, addition. This open level is incredibly difficult because a lot of dancers don't understand that and they get out there and they just do a bunch of silly stuff or they get out there and they focus on the wrong things. They abandon the craftsmanship or they focus too much on the artistry and it's hard. So for me, when I look at this competition, the number one thing I'm looking at is craftsmanship. How well can these dancers mirror and reproduce those moves that other people have already made that means you respect the art form and you're willing to be coachable you're willing to go through that journey to actually learn it there was only one couple i felt who did that part the best and that goes to the first couple they let me pull them up real quick uh he had a brown shirt she had kind of like a white shirt and i think it's purple or black pants but as you can see they're coming out doing swing outs clearly they're taking their time. She's doing some switches or swivels, whatever you want to call them, but it's identifiable side by side. This is great. It's identifiable Lindy Hop, and they're adding in a little bit of some of those classic movements there to, to really top off that phrase with the music. I liked that. I really liked that. It was, it was something about how simple their movements were and how clear it was for me to identify the things that are fully recognizable that came from the past. Now, of course you can get better at that. And a, and a lot of the times when dancers are at this level, they, they tend to work on things that end up being subjective and they get it confused. What's objective and what's subjective. So I encourage whatever, whoever this couple is, you guys did a great job, fantastic working together and nailing the craftsmanship part. Now, of course, there's other things I look for as dancers become uh, more polished and what I mean by polished is they're able to add more timing to their movement. This, this obviously amplifies the music in a way the audience can feel something emotionally, but then also the creativity part. I wanna see how they sprinkle in a little bit of their original ideas on top of that foundation. And so, of course, dancers will get better at that and there's a real balance at trying to organize how you do that under pressure in a competition. But for me, at this particular level, the control part, the, the technique itself, the craftsmanship part is so incredibly important. And a big shout out to that couple for, for nailing it. And I would say, you know, generally, you're just gonna get better and better at those moves. You might end up not doing more to those moves, but actually doing less to those moves to make them look better. And that's a lot of dancers ask me, really, that's what happens? Yeah, the better you get, usually you're doing less. You're not, you're not doing a lot with those old moves. You're actually making those moves kind of like your foundation, your vanilla foundation. And then you're adding all the extra, the flavor and the cherry on top with your style. But once you solidify that solid foundation, that's generally when the maturation process begins to prolif proliferate rapidly. So Congrats, guys. Um, who do you think won this competition? That's my opinion. That's how I like to judge it. That's the way I look at it. I've been doing this for, for a long time, and I've seen thousands and thousands of dancers, and, and really that's the kind of 
perspective I like to give on the open competition. So let me know what you guys think about this open in the comment section below. If you're watching this and you've never done swing dancing, you should start. You don't need to do a competition to get started. Uh, I was a professional dancer when I started swing dancing. And so when I learned swing dancing, I had to come in from the outside and I was struggling trying to figure out what's objective, what isn't objective and how do I balance the two? So after 10,000 hours of, of work and, and really just scientific research, me just going through the process of social dancing and, and reforming things and taking classes from everybody, I've been able to put together really just some simple principles to help you strip away all of the complexity of Lindy Hop to get down to those core bones to know exactly what's objective and what's subjective in a respectable way so that you can master all of the movements that have come before with ease, but also learn how to improvise and add your unique voice to that. So check out some of those classes in the description below. You can also check out some of my free courses below. Got a lot, about 25 of those you can check, check out and sample. So um, let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Good shout out to everybody. I encourage all of you who competed in this competition, please keep going. Don't stop. Keep learning. Keep growing. Be respectful to the art form. Don't abandon it. Don't think it's old. Don't think it needs to be updated. Don't think it needs to be reformed. It's totally fine. Lindy Hop is great. So master it. Fall in love with it because we got a big job in making sure generations years from now will still be able to learn it with simplicity and enjoy uh, what we enjoy so much. So with that said, let me know who you thought was the winner of this competition. And if I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see something.